Hello, fifth grade. It's Mrs. Taranja with the Citizenship Academy. We're on Domain 6, The Reformation, Lesson 7, Revolutionary Thinking. Today we're going to read informational text to describe and summarize the new scientific theories proposed by Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo, as well as the church's response to those theories, and to reference information to plan a slide presentation. Some key vocabulary is contradict, to disagree with, and go against a statement or action. A theory is an explanation of why something happens based on evidence. Contemporary is a person living in the same time period and or who is the same age as another person. Condemn is to stay in a, say in a strong or def, def, definite way that something is wrong or bad. And speculation, an educated guess about something not proven beyond doubt. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do our independent reading for today. Okay, our word work for today is contradict. Copernicus may also have feared what would happen to him if he publicly contradicted the church's belief about the nature of the universe and the earth's place in it. To contradict means to disagree with or go against a statement or action, and it is a verb. So now we're going to be talking about a slide presentation. So you're actually going to get a chance to plan a slide presentation, just like the ones I use in my lessons. And um, you're going to write, create one about reformation. So an informational essay and a slide presentation have a lot in common. So they're meant to give you information, and it's also really organized. We start with an introduction. We have a lead, in, lead into a conclusion. And you notice this when I do my videos here. Is, you know, I usually start with an introduction to the lesson and, and conclude with what's the assessment of what we've learned. Informational essays and slides, they do differ. Slide presentations have a lot less writing but more pictures. While obviously with an essay we're not going to include very many pictures to it. Um, slide presentations can also have bullet points and phrases so it can be very short and um, not really specific on things um, but obviously an essay has to have complete sentences. So they also use technology to provide visual aids. So remember, photographs and illustrations really emphasize what you're presenting on a slide presentation. So we add those images that make sense. We're not just putting in pictures because they're funny or whatever. We're putting in it because it strengthens what the presentation's for. So I'm actually going to show you an example of this kind of presentation. So this is an example of a sample presentation that I would give. So the introduction slide should clearly state the topic of the presentation. So the topic for this one is the Reformation, Ideas That Rock the World. Please do not copy this, by the way. This is an example. It should capture the audience's attention. So looking at this page, there's a lot of things going on. And if we're talking about the Reformation, I see Martin Luther here. I see some of the printing press um, and pieces that are visual cues that help a the person that's watching the presentation to be more engaged. So each slide after the introduction should have a title to it with an image. And the title can be a question, so what was Reformation? The text in the slides are often just bullet points, quick things so that when you're presenting, if I'm in front of you, I can say, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about in this one. So, for example, the bullet point is a really religious movement that sought to change or reform the Catholic Church. So instead of me say, just reading that, I might also say, okay, so these there was many people that believed uh, that they didn't believe what the Catholic Church had to say, so they outspoke and said their own points of view. That's what we would use this for. Notice how I'm not writing exactly what I'm saying verbatim because obviously that's kind of boring. Now you notice on my slides I do like to write everything out, but you don't have to specifically listen to how I'm reading it. Sometimes you can just read it on your own. That's why it's important we don't put too many words on a slide because people can read their own or read what's written on the slides. The presentation is meant to be a supportive tool for you talking. 
Next one, when you're deciding on a phrase or the sentence, remember the presentation sh uh, is meant to be given orally, meaning you're supposed to be talking. So make sure when you're writing something, do you need, does it get just to have, when you're writing something for it, make sure it helps you remember what you're orally going to say, and it also gives enough information that kind of supports it. So for this one, what event launched the Reformation? When Martin Luther posted his 95 theses on the door of the church at the University of Wittenberg. They also put a photo here to support what they're talking about. Now, for this presentation, I would then go into the, the whole conversation about what happened with Martin Luther and his 95 theses and what happened with the church and the pope. I would then go into that. But notice how I didn't write all of that down. Effective presentations do not overwhelm the audience with too much text. So notice this one is a good example of not too much text. It's very minimal. There are four bullet points. Um, there is a title. Notice there is a title on each of these slides. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a question, but it is sometimes a little bit more engaging for an audience to have that question to start and then using your bullet points to answer that question. Why does the Reformation matter? Same thing, this is another example slide. And notice that all of the pictures have to do with what you're talking about. We're not just putting in anything, we're putting in things that make sense. And remember, phrases do not have to have punctuation and grammar. Remember, these are short, quick phrases. They're not even complete sentences. They're just quick to get to the point. Remember, they also should have a logical order. So each slide shouldn't be bouncing around. So if we're talking about the Reformation, we should start with what happened first and make our way through the timeline. We're not just kind of pinpointing different things all over the place. That way it has a little bit more of a flow pattern to it when you're pre presenting. And again, visual images are super important because they really add to what you're trying to present. So this is an example of the rubric that you're going to be looking at when you're creating your slide presentation. Remember, we're aiming for exemplary. So if and anytime you feel doubtful about something you're adding to your slide presentation, make sure you're including this information to it. Reminder, your presentation is going to include five slides. So your presentation is going to have an introduction three body slides, and a conclusion. So you'll have a total of five slides. And it's going to be about the Reformation. So feel free to go back into any videos and rewatch them um, to review any chapters from the reader that you might have missed. And that way you can strengthen your reading. So referring back to the rubric is going to help you immensely when you're creating your slides because it will give you more um, guide of where you need to go. Now, you're going to choose three slide titles from the list that are here. So these are going to be your body slides. And then in the next lesson, we're going to work on the introduction and conclusion slides, as well as those, choose those images. So the titles are grouped to help with organizations. However, you can stray from grouping. So if you don't want to pick all from this category and you want to pick from other ones, feel free to do so. But your job is to pick three of these to be your three body slides and that's what you're going to focus on. You are going to make sure you add key details to those slides and you can also add pictures if you want to get ahead of that before the next lesson. And also remember to go in a nice um, clear order. Remember do not worry about the introduction or the conclusion right now because we're going to do that in the next lesson. So right now let me sum up. You're going to check and on this list, you're going to choose three of those titles and create three slides with them, including key details and pictures to support it. And we will see everyone in our next lesson.